A few years after uh, the publication of Profiles in Power, uh, I was invited to become the executive director of a group called the Radiation and Public Health Project, one of the more important groups that no one's ever heard of, RPHP. <coughs> it was run by Jay Gould, an epidemiologist who had built one of the early business information um, technology products, and Ernest Sternglass, a radiation physicist who fled his family, fled Germany before the really bad stuff happened. He was called the little Einstein. And he became an expert in radiation health uh, physics. The RPHP was conducting the second baby teeth study in American history. The first baby teeth study done during the bomb test years when the Geiger counters were going off all over the country and Salk and others were leading ban the bomb protests at the White House. Um, the United, the U.S. Public Health Service funded the first baby teeth study and they wanted to find out what is, is the radiation from this atomic bomb testing. These tens of thousands of weapons that the U.S. and the USSR were testing in the air above their countries and over the oceans in the Pacific, was it actually getting into children's bodies? The study was done and strontium-90, which is a man-made isotope, only produced from nuclear atomic bombs or nuclear fission in reactors went up, 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 and childhood leukemia and childhood cancer went up, 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 up. Why? Because fetus and infants are much more susceptible to all toxins than adults are. John F. Kennedy, President Kennedy, saw that information and it inspired him to sign in 19, summer of 1963, shortly before he was assassinated, the historic nuclear test ban treaty. It banned all above ground testing, all underwater testing. They left underground for the military so that they could do their testing there. Khrushchev was hearing the same message from Sakharov, the father of the Soviet H-bomb, and he agreed. So at the height of the Cold War, a year after the Cuban Missile Crisis, Khrushchev and Kennedy got together, the treaty was signed, UK came on, other nations came on later, and strontium-90 started declining. And in his address to the nation, he didn't tweet too much uh, at all, uh, <laughs> Kennedy said on his address to the nation about the test ban treaty, the loss of even one human life or the malformation of even one baby who may be born long after we are gone should be of concern to us all. Our children and grandchildren are not merely statistics toward which we can be indifferent, nor does this affect the nuclear powers alone. These tests befoul the air of all men and nations without their knowledge and without their consent. And as you will see, one of the main reasons we want to close Diablo Canyon now is because of the increases in cancer and infant mortality, infant deaths in the first year of life that are affecting people who live near these nuclear plants without their consent. As this baby teeth study was going on, we had three main areas we were collecting teeth because the body interprets different radioactive isotopes in different ways. Radioactive thyroid goes uh, radioactive iodine goes to the thyroid, plutonium to the genitals, cesium, soft tissue, can be related to breast cancer, and strontium-90, <laughs> the body thinks it's calcium, so it takes it into the bones and the teeth. So they were collecting baby teeth to measure the levels of strontium-90. This was the second baby teeth study, and the theory was that with the bomb testing gone, everyone said, well, the strontium-90 should go away, and the Radiation Public Health Project said, well, that's an interesting idea, but let's test it. Let's do the second baby teeth study. Let's collect the baby teeth, send them to an independent lab, have them liquefied, put them through an advanced scintillation counter, and see how, what the level of strontium-90 is by year of birth of the child. We focused our studies on the greater metropolitan area, California, and also South Florida, where I lived at that time. And there was a woman up in St. Lucie, a grocery store clerk, who started helping us to collect baby teeth because the people in Port St. Lucie lived five to 10 miles from the St. Lucie, Florida Power and Lights, St. Lucie nuclear power plants, two reactors. She's collecting baby teeth and she takes her six month old baby, her third child, 
into the doctor for a checkup, end of the story is the child has neuroblastoma, nerve cancer, six months old. And as Debbie is going down to Palm, uh, West Palm Beach to the hospitals, she's meeting all these other mothers from St. Lucie. It turns out St. Lucie has a cancer cluster so large that the state, and, and there's a big hurdle to define something as a cancer cluster, the state certified it as a cancer cluster. They measured 246 toxins, nothing. What didn't they measure? Beta radiation, strontium-90, which is a known carcinogen. They didn't touch it. Things were so bad there that Caldwell bankers, when you bought a house, you had to sign a notice saying that you were made aware there's a cancer cluster here in uh, this town. Julie and I would go to these meetings in St. Lucie, and Debbie would bring her neighbors in. And each mother would tell the story of what happened after they heard the worst four words in the English language. Your child has cancer. And they became supporters of the baby tea study. They wanted to know what they could do to prevent cancer in their houses now for their other children. And this was, up to this point, this had been a fabulous legal and technical and economic issue. At this point, it really got visceral because Julie and I would get in our car. It was about a two hour drive from Miami to St. Lucie. We'd get in our car and before we'd get back to the freeway, we'd pull over and just cry our eyes out. You know, taking in what, what had happened and the stories we heard from these mothers. <clears throat> it was at that time that Julie and I vowed that whenever we had an opportunity to educate, to research, or to try to stop nuclear power, we would take it, no matter what. So let's fast forward to 2012, when Ronaldo emailed me like three times, I've got to talk to you. I said, I said okay, let's Skype. And he said, I've St. Lucie, um, San Onofre nuclear power plant's been leaking radiation. I want to move the academy from a, a think tank and conferences and writing to also be an action-oriented group. I want to close down San Onofre and Diablo Canyon, the remaining nuclear plants in California, and I want you to head that up. Well, I had a two-fold reaction. One was from the Godfather. Just when you think you're out, they pull you back in. <laughs> All right? And the other was, hey, Julie, here's an opportunity. You know, let's do this for Debbie for Jaden and all the people in St. Lucie because maybe in a state like California, we can get this radiation health issue out into the public. As director of the Academy's Safe Energy Project, I have coordinated with the full support of the Academy two radiation health studies on Diablo Canyon. The first one in 2014 was done by Joseph Mangano, uh, an epidemiologist with 32 peer-reviewed publications and three books on radiation. And what he found was from the time St. Lucie, uh, sorry, from the time Diablo Canyon opened in the mid 80s till that, the period of time for which he had data, San Luis Obispo County went from a low cancer county to a high cancer county. And there were increases in all the radiation, radiosensitive forms of cancer. We also then funded another study by Chris Busby. UK-based, London-based, a world-renowned radiation chemist. And he was able to get data at the zip code level. And in his peer-reviewed paper, per published in the Jacobs Journal of Epidemiology and, Pre Epidemiology and Prevention, he found, and I quote, a remarkable and statistically significant 28% increase in infant mortality rates in the zip codes around the reactor, and not in the inland San Luis Obispo counties away from the reactor. And this is a deep, dirty secret of the nuclear age, that the radiation that is allowed to be released because the plants could not function without it. So they are allowed by the NRC to periodically release radioactive gases and liquids is contributing to America's cancer epidemic. Where are we today on this issue? As Ronaldo laid out in uh, 2016, PG&E, 
the owner and operator of Diablo Canyon, submitted a proposal to the State Lands Commission. Their reactors, which sit there at Avila Beach, pull in 2.5 billion gallons of water a day to cool the reactor, uh, to provide operations, and for emergency core cooling. They don't have those cooling towers like you saw at Three Mile Island. They're seawater, ocean water cooled. But those intake pipes, those 80-foot diameter intake pipes, sit on the tidelands that belong to the state of California. And PG&E had a lease. That lease was about to expire. And PG&E made a deal. They offered a deal. They said, we will close the plant by 2025, the year our NRC operating license ends. We will protect our workforce and we will replace the 2,200 megawatts of Diablo Canyon with 100% renewable energy. But we want you to extend our land lease, our Tidewater lease, until 2025. We at the Academy said, this is great. We're for that. We're for ending the plant, no license renewal, check. We're for protecting the workers, check. We're for replacing it with green energy, the California moonshot, check. But we want something more. We want the plant to close now. So we would not sign off on that particular deal. We as the Academy, um, our lawyer, our executive director and I went to the State Lands Commission in Sacramento. We laid out all of this health information and the fact is that in their report, the staff to the State Lands Commission in which they recommended that they take this deal from PG&E, extend the license, extend, not extend the license, but grant them the land lease to continue operating through 2025, they did not mention one word about these radiation health studies. They never reviewed it. They never mentioned it. Mike was up there. Rinaldo was there. There was a public meeting in which the State Lands Commission was going to decide, do we approve the lease? And we went up and we spoke. We all spoke and we presented this information. And they unanimously approved the lease. And on the ride home from the hearing in Morro Bay, um, Rinaldo uh, said to me, well, Jerry, we tried our best. I guess it's time to hang up our spurs, you know? And I said, are you kidding? And he said, yeah, I'm kidding. We're the last man standing. Um, and he said, even though the Academy, you know, it's going to be at least 100000 we're in, we're in a quarter of a million dollars right now. And none of this was in the Academy budget. We're going to forge ahead. And this is the thing that's always been so incredible to me about Ronaldo as a businessman who cares about the environment, who cares about society as a whole, and who, with Lala at his side, walks the walk, talks the talk, and signs a lot of the checks. Um, we filed this suit, and the judge in the Superior Court in LA ruled against us. We wanted, as required, under CEQA, the California Law on Environmental Quality, an environmental impact report. The law requires that when you're having a major decision that could potentially impact the environment. The judge, and we saw 13 exceptional circumstances that could impact the environment. Some of them, like radiation, seismic risk, were definitely going to impact the environment. Dumping, um, killing 1.4 billion early stage fish through these intake towers was definitely going to impact the environment. And then things like terrorism, radioactive waste, which could in time Im impact the environment. The judge ruled against us. But even when she ruled, she said that there are these circumstances that normally would require an Im Im impact report. But I'm going to buy PG&E's ar argument that this plant's been operating a long time. Let's just let it go through. And she said, maybe I'll get reversed on appeal. And you have our reply brief in your folder there on the table along with several other documents. And when you read that, and I invite you to read it because you see the level of legal and technical work that we've put into it. So this is oral hearings on May 10th, a decision. 
And if we win, or when we win, PG&E and the State Lands Commission will take it to the Supreme Court of California. If we lose, Ronaldo has assured me, we're going to the Supreme Court. Why do we keep doing this? Why? Because if we can shut Diablo Canyon now, we will prevent thousands of cancers and hundreds of infant mortality, of hundreds of infants who will die in the first year of life living near that plant. How can I say this? Because Joe Mangano did studies of what happens after 12 reactors close, including the Rancho Seco reactor, which closed near Sacramento in 1989, popular ref local referendum. In the decades after Rancho Seco closed, all forms of cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, declined dramatically. Infant health improved. So you took one toxin out of the environment. Sure, there's other toxins there. And health improves. And what was Mangano showed that compared to if the reactor had continued to operate, there would have been 4,600 additional cancer deaths if it had been continued, if Rancho Seco had continued to operate. And Busby, Dr. Busby in his study showed us the hundreds of infant deaths that are completely correlated with the increase in tritium releases from the plant as one indicator that would be prevented if we could close Diablo Canyon now. So that's where um, we are today. When we win in this lawsuit, our ideal is that the judge will order the State Lands Commission to conduct an environmental impact review as required by California law, political deals aside, of these issues that we raise. If that happens, it will be the first time in U.S. history that an official government body has studied the radiation health issue. If they say and find that our scientists and others, uh, there, are, there are dozens of papers on childhood cancer near nuclear power plants that Mangano so, cites in his study, then we will have the, an official environmental review done by the State Lands Commission, ordered by the court in the state of California, saying, confirming, Normal radiation releases from nuclear power plants have contributed to cancer increases at a significant level and infant mortality. This has an implication for every one of the 400 nuclear power plants around the world. And this is why the nuclear industry has fought tooth and nail to keep this dark, dirty secret of the nuclear age away from the public. Because this would be the death knell for nuclear power. To learn more about our Safe Energy Project, Diablo Canyon, or the Busby Study, please contact us by phone 805-892-4600 or via email info at worldbusiness.org. We look forward to being connected.